times we've offered proper before you, as all heaven's hosts adore. Prayers with heavenly incense burning, rise to shroud your holy throne. Countless saints, robed white in splendor, washed in blood of spotless Praise to you, O Lord. I lift up my hands and my heart to you. You have done great things, healed the sick, bound up the brokenhearted, invited in the stranger, welcomed the cast aside. Praise the Lord. Your deeds are majestic. We know that your righteousness will endure forever. Praise, Praise the, the Lord. Lord. Let us remember what God has done for us, the food and the wonders given from their hands. Come, let, let us praise, praise the Lord. Lord. During the season of Epiphany, we light the Christ candle. Hear these words of the Apostle John about Jesus, our light. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. Jesus Christ is our light and our life. In his power and in his name, let us worship God. Welcome to Worship Creston Church. We've been praying for you as you've been gathering in all of your different watching and listening places for this worship service. It is our prayer that each of you has an encounter with our living God. The good news for us today is that God is here in this place, and he's also in your place wherever you are. If this is the first, place, first time that you've joined us for worship, welcome. You can find out more about our church by visiting the website, 
prestonchurch.org. Feel free to send us an email if you'd like us to get in touch with you. I'm recording this week in my study at home instead of in the church sanctuary due to Friday's very snowy weather. We continue the season of Epiphany until February 16. Epiphany is a season that celebrates the revelation of our Savior, the light of the world. Today, on this first Sunday of the month, we also had the special privilege of gathering at the table to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. May God give you his rich blessing as you partake of this gracious meal. You'll want to make sure that your prepared bread and cup are nearby, along with the order of service. And you can find that order of service in today's email. It contains everything that you'll need in order to participate fully in our worship service, including responsive readings and the songs. So be bold, speak out, sing out loud, and join in with everyone else who's gathered for worship today. Even though that we are in our separate physical locations, our God recognizes our corporate worship today that we all offer together. Now, as we continue our worship, I invite you to stand in body or in spirit to stretch out your hands, perhaps as a visible sign of receiving God's greeting right along with everyone else who is watching and listening today. People of God, to those who are called, who are beloved in God the Father and kept safe for Jesus Christ, may mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. And all God's people say together, Amen. Please join me for our morning prayer. O God, who quickens the faith that brought Magi from the East, who kindles the hope that brought captives from exile, and who inspires the love that brings strangers together, let the light that shone in the darkness shine upon us. Let it shine within us that it might refine our divided hearts. Let it shine around us that it might illumine the way that leads to our neighbors. And let it shine above us that it might reveal the Christ who manifests your presence. Amen.
Join with me in this prayer of confession. Savior, we too often look to ourselves to find strength. We put our trust in our own hands. We forget who made those hands. We despair when our legs give out beneath us and when all we can see is darkness. We forget you are our refuge in the storm, our help in ages past. Merciful creator, open our lips to cry to you. Remind us who created the stars in the sky, the depths of the sea, whose eyes saw our unformed bodies. Bring us into your arms, lean our heads on your shoulder. Forgive us when we go astray. Help us put our faith in you. Hear what the Lord has done, as told in Psalm 111. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just, and all his commands are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever, enacted in faithfulness and uprightness. He provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. Our worship also includes our offerings, as we've been just reminded once again of God's marvelous grace toward us, our best response is to offer our entire lives back to Him. Offering money is just one very special way that we can do that. During these times of being apart, you may give your offerings using the postal system, or you may feel free to use our online giving system making sure to clearly designate which causes you'd like your offering to be shared with. The deacons are pleased to acknowledge your faithful, continued, and regular giving to Creston Church. They encourage you to also consider our special offerings that are listed in the Friday emails. Today's special offering is for the Benevolence Fund. It's a fund managed by our deacons to provide help to those in need 
both in our church family and in our surrounding community. Our weekly offering is for the other ministries of our church and our denomination. What God has called us to do as a church in this neighborhood and in this city and what God has called us to do as a denomination all around the world. Please remember to check the Friday email. It contains lots of information for you about our church family and the ongoing ministries of Creston Church. This week's edition contains these highlights. An update from the Pastor Search Committee, Snow Day Extravaganza, which has been rescheduled for February 20, the February meeting of Creston's Council this coming Wednesday, updates from two of our missionary families, the Lees and the Ipples, information about tax or about free tax preparations, and opportunities for children and youth. Always feel free to share prayer requests with us so that we can share them via email to the rest of the congregation during the course of the week and so that we can include them in our corporate worship prayers. I'd like to share the prayer concerns that we've received this past week. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. Thanks to great care and the prayers of the saints, Dave's mom has recovered enough from the virus to be discharged from St. Mary's Hospital. She'll be in the rehab nursing section at Raybrook. Still no visitors, but she's feeling much better and able to rest peacefully. Thanks to God for these answers to prayers on her behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A longtime former member of Creston Church, Bill, passed away quietly in his sleep early this Tuesday morning. Bill was a member of Creston Church from 1955 through 1989. Please fr pray for God's peace to surround this family as they say their earthly farewells to a well-loved father, grandfather, and child of God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Please keep Jane's nine-month-old great-grand-nephew, Ryan, in your prayers. He fell from his high chair and broke his femur. His mother, Liz, is still mourning the loss of her parents, so this is an added struggle on top of that. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be on the lookout all the time to see God at work in your life. Be sure to share a God story with us by writing up an email or perhaps making a video so that we can share it with everyone else. Please join me for our prayers of the people. O oh God, whom to know is to love and whom to love is to find true life, you have invited us to pray to you. So this morning, we do that in and through the good and strong name of Christ Jesus our Lord. We thank you that we can be here this morning. We're grateful that you have kept us safe through a week of work, of travel, of learning, of play. We thank you that you have protected many of us on snowy and icy roads, even as we remain glad for the blessing of shelter during winter months and always. For furnaces that warm us, for storm windows that provide a buffer between the cold and us, for sweaters and blankets we can wrap around ourselves, for coats and mittens to wear when we do go outdoors, for all these blessings and for the money we have to purchase it all in the first place, we render to you, our provider God, our thanks and praise. We're grateful for Marge's continued improvement after her recent hospitalization due to COVID-19. We thank you too, O oh God, for the continued reduction of COVID-19 in our community. Keep us faithful in each of our efforts to continue to reduce the spread of that virus. 
All of us have been impacted in one way or another, but we pray especially for those whose struggles are overwhelming in so many ways. We are mindful, too, of the many people in this city and elsewhere whose shelters are inadequate, if they have a roof over their heads at all. We summon to mind the ill-clad, those who cannot pay the gas bill, those whose mittens are threadbare, and those whose poorly insulated windows whistle when the wind blows. We cannot be grateful for the ways you provide for most of us, O Lord, without praying for your providence in the lives of the needy. In your good name, help your people always to be reaching out and in so doing to be the hands and fingers of you, Father God. This morning we also thank you for this church and for the many volunteers who every week devote long hours to lending an ear to the lonely, to providing a window on your word to our children who need to know that you are love, both within our congregation and in our neighborhood. When the fruit of this kind of labor seems difficult to see, may your spirit distribute bursts of renewed energy and encouragement. When frustrating and seemingly insoluble problems present themselves, grant a wisdom and clarity of vision that can help. We petition for other needs in this place as, as well, O oh Lord. Continue to be with our sick and suffering members and many others who feel ravaged by the effects of old age. Give comfort and, and encouragement to Bill's family. Be too with the many people of this congregation who suffer in silence as many days as not. Stand near to those who are haunted by mad, bad memories or who bear the scars of abuse that happened years ago but still lingers with fresh effects each new morning. Fortify those who experience panic attacks, who feel afraid all the time without knowing why. Lend light to those who pass their days in gloomy clouds of depression. Signal your love to those who feel so frustrated at the way life is turning out that they scarcely know what to do with themselves. Give healing to little Ryan and comfort to his mother Liz. Be with the rest of our young children who wither under, under the taunts of other children who poke fun of their weight or their complexion or their lisp or their off-brand clothing. Life is, in this world is not always a picnic, dear God. Some days are just plain miserable. The gospel tells us that you understand this firsthand through Jesus our Lord. Remind us of this compassion and shower us with your love, especially on days when the love of other people seems remote or spotty at best. Yet there are joys too, and we thank you for those gifts. There are good days too, and we aim our praise for such times to you first and foremost. You, O oh God, have been our help in the past and you are our bright hope for years to come. Your gospel and the Holy Supper that seals your word to us in a new and fresh way is the bright center of our lives. So bless us in the balance of this service. You have brought us to the blessing of a new morning. Grant us your presence and support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Our children also have an opportunity to join in worship via their own children's worship, audio or video. Let's share this blessing from God with them and with each other, saying together, The Lord be with you and also 
with you. It is our privilege to read a portion of God's Word and then share some thoughts about that text. So I invite you to turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark. It's in the New Testament. We begin with Matthew and then Mark. We're going to read from Mark chapter 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 29. Mark chapter 1, verse 29. And when you've found that, Please join me in prayer. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mark chapter 1, verse 29 through 39. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. <clears throat> Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they immediately told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, <clears throat> Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you! And Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. On the home page of, Crest, of the Creston Church website, you can locate our mission and vision statements. A vision statement focuses on the future and what Creston Church wants to ultimately become. A mission statement focuses on today and what Creston Church is doing to achieve it on a day-to-day -day basis. Here's what our website says. Creston Church is growing in Christ-centered diversity, honest worship and prayer, relational witness, and serving each other. Creston Church is becoming an intentional community of disciples, living in Christ all together with our neighbors to follow Jesus in every part of life. Most likely, there was a process a number of years ago here at Creston Church to come up with these two statements. It's usually best if congregations are familiar with them so that everyone is aware of what is driving the ministry. Another way to describe these statements might be to call them our ministry plan, our council, our committees, our staff, our volunteers, and all of our members can all function well together using the guidance of our ministry plan. The development of written ministry plans is not part of the usual life of fishermen like James, John, Simon, and Andrew. For years, they've just gotten into their boats, thrown over the nets, and catch the fish. And now, only a few days have gone by since Jesus told them to follow him. Yes, they did leave their nets. Yes, they did make some big adjustments in their lives in order to become fishers of people instead of fishers of fish. But that just happened last week. 
hardly enough time for them to figure out what fishing for people is all about, let alone learn very much about Jesus. As faithful Jews, Jesus and his brand new followers have just completed their time of worship in the synagogue on the Sabbath. These ruins from the 4th century stand on the very same foundation where, amazingly, Jesus drove out an evil spirit that very morning. There's sure to be the big, that's sure to be the big topic of discussion over lunch, just across the way at Simon and Andrew's house. You can see the circular foundation of stones at their home in Capernaum on the north shore of the Sea of Galilee. When they all come through the door, they discover that Simon's mother-in-law is ill and in bed, and they let Jesus know that lunch will be delayed. However, these fishermen are still just beginning to get acquainted with this rabbi named Jesus, and the four men do not know very much about this new way of life, this business of following a teacher, of being a disciple. Actually, we're not all that different from these fishermen turned disciples. We are still learning to learn how to be followers and disciples of Jesus. Remember the Creston Church statements? We are growing. We are becoming disciples. We are becoming followers. Right there in the words of our ministry plan, we admit that we have not arrived at our goals. It's even possible that many of us are not very familiar with these words of the plan. The plan is ambitious. The plan is specific. The plan is long-term. Here at Creston Church, we admit that we are still learning, still growing, still becoming disciples and followers. As far as we know, Jesus never wrote anything down for us to read and study. He isn't a bookish type of rabbi, requiring his disciples to read the Torah for hours on end. Jesus is a modeling type of rabbi. All that these fishermen turned disciples need to do is to watch how Jesus lives every day. Just pay attention and they'll be able to catch on. Jesus begins to demonstrate his ministry plan right there at Simon's house in the middle of the Sabbath. Enjoying meals with the community of faith has been taking place for centuries. When Jesus learns that Simon's mother-in-law has a fever, he gets busy. He goes to her room where she's lying in her bed. He takes hold of her hand to help her sit up. And as he does that, that severe fever disappears and doesn't even leave her with the usual exhaustion that follows a fever. No medicine, no incantations, nothing showy. Jesus simply takes her hand and silently directs his healing power to make her completely well. As she gets back to being the hostess, she shows absolutely no sign of having been sick. It's a miracle done with kindness and gentleness. As the hours go by, so does the Sabbath. And by the time sunset arrives, word spreads around the town of Capernaum about that evil spirit that Jesus drove out during the worship time, and about the healing of Peter's mother-in-law. If Jesus can do those two miracles, certainly he ought to be able to do some repeats of those amazing wonders. All through the night after the conclusion of the Sabbath, the line of people who were sick or demon-possessed continues to lengthen outside of the house. Over and over, Jesus uses his miraculous power to bring relief to suffering people. That's one of the parts of Jesus' ministry plan, providing loving care to those who are suffering. Eventually, the healed people disperse back to their homes, 
and Jesus gets in a short bit of rest and sleep. But not for long. The alarm clock in his head wakes him up again while it's still dark and he leaves the house. The crowds have left and Jesus heads out all by himself to a solitary place. The Greek word here implies that Jesus heads toward a hidden or deserted place. He does not want anyone to be able to find him. While Jesus is out of touch with everyone else, he gets in touch with his Father. Jesus prays. His human body is exhausted in every way, and he connects with his Father to be strengthened and, and encouraged for his earthly ministry. The Father and the Son talk and listen, listen and talk some more with each other and enjoying their divine relationship. That's the second part of Jesus' ministry plan. Prayer, fellowship, communion with his Father. Soon the four men display their lack of understanding once more of what it means to grow into following Jesus. What are you doing all the way out here in the middle of nowhere? Come on, everyone wants to see you. They don't realize how invigorating this prayer time has been for Jesus. Now on this Sunday morning, as the sun begins to come up, Jesus begins once again to lead and interact with his followers. We're heading somewhere else now. There are other places where I need to preach, not just in Capernaum. It's time for me to go preach in some other towns here in Galilee. James R. Edwards writes, Jesus, however, remains undeflected from his purpose, <clears throat> responding simply and decisively, This is why I have come. In this unassuming declaration, Jesus reaffirms his baptism commission of service that he fulfills by proclaiming the good news of God. The primary action of Jesus' ministry plan is preaching, while at the same time helping the suffering and praying to his Father. This word preaching is definitely filled with more than just this speaking that I'm doing right now. When Jesus tells the four men that he needs to preach, he means that he needs to proclaim the good news, to be a herald of good news, to be an announcer of the good news of God. Without the preaching, the miracles just end up being the latest circus-type entertainment in these towns and villages. So off they go to the many other towns in Galilee. Jesus continues to put his ministry plan into action in these places, too. Jesus does more miracles of healing and driving out demons, and he preaches the good news in their synagogues. Day by day, week by week, the disciples gradually get a sense of what it means to be a follower of this amazing rabbi who puts his ministry plan into practice. Service, prayer, and preaching. The way that Jesus models his ministry plan is for us to imitate too in 2021. Whatever Jesus encountered, he figured out a way to bring this plan into reality, and we can do the very same thing. We've got lots of concrete ways written into the Creston Church ministry plan. Like Jesus, we can stay focused on the ministry plan by providing care and service here in our neighborhood and around the world. During the COVID-19 pandemic, there are plenty of opportunities. Do you see injustice or hurting people? Find ways to show love and care. And just like Jesus, prayer is God's gift to us to use in our ministry plan. We enjoy fellowship, connection, communion, and relationship with our Father, just like Jesus did. And like Jesus, we preach. We are heralds, announcers of good news. 
more than the disciples in our text, we have the complete picture of that good news. Jesus died, Jesus rose from the dead, and Jesus is coming again. We proclaim this good news as the pivotal part of our ministry plan. That doesn't mean that all of us have to deliver sermons and worship services. This does mean that we proclaim what we know and believe about Jesus in every possible way, in every possible place, at every possible time. It's an ongoing learning process. We proclaim even while we grow and gain understanding. Do you know John 3.16? Proclaim that. Do you know the Apostles' Creed? Proclaim that. Do you have a story of Jesus' love and grace in your life? Proclaim that. In just a few minutes, we will do some more proclaiming too when we gather around the table for the Lord's Supper. When it's time to eat and drink, we'll hear those words for whenever we eat and drink this bread eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. As we celebrate the sacrament, listen to the wonderful message of God's grace to you. It's a beautiful time to review what you can then proclaim to others. Proclaiming puts an expanded light on what it means for each of us to preach as part of our own ministry plans. As you approach the table, may God the Father move among you through his word and spirit to nourish you for participation in Jesus' ministry plan. May the Father bring resurrection where there is death, hope where there is depression, light where there is darkness. And may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ draw you closer to the Father and closer to one another until his kingdom comes in all of its fullness. Amen. Let's pray together. Everlasting God, you give strength to the powerless and power to the faint. You raise up the sick and cast out demons. Make us agents of healing and wholeness. Fill us with desire for fellowship and prayer with you so that your good news may be known and proclaimed to the ends of your creation. Amen.
God has just fed us with his word. And now we are privileged to be nourished at his table for the Lord's Supper. You'll want to have your order of service available, as well as your prepared cup and bread. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the gospel tells us that God, by the leading of a star, manifested the Savior to the peoples of the earth. And by the power that enabled Christ to change water into wine, made known his glory to the disciples. Come then to the joyful peace of the Lord and be transformed. I invite you, people of God, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right for us to give thanks and praise. Let us pray. With joy we praise you, gracious God, for you have created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us, even when we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ our Lord, who came as the light of the world to show us your way of truth in parables and miracles. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels and the whole creation to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 my heart, my heart adores you. My heart pours out my praise to you. You are holy, Lord. In sending Christ the light of the world, you revealed your glory to the nations. You sent a star to guide seekers of wisdom to Bethlehem, that they might worship Christ. Your signs and witnesses in every age lead people from every place to worship him. We praise you that in him we become your children, baptized into your service. Therefore, we proclaim our faith as signed and sealed in the sacrament. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. God of all power, send your Holy Spirit upon us, that in sharing the bread we may share in the body of Christ, that in sharing the cup we may share in his blood. Grant that, being joined together in Christ Jesus, we may become united in faith, and in all things become mature in the one who is, in our, who is our head. Amen. We give thanks to God the Father that our Savior, Jesus Christ, before he suffered, gave us this memorial of his sacrifice until he comes again. At the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus took the cup. And he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us therefore join with the church of all times and all places and profess our faith in the triune God as signed and sealed in this sacrament saying together, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he arose again from the dead, 
he ascended to, into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we approach your table, we ask that you move among us through your word and spirit. Bring resurrection where there is death, hope where there is depression, light where there is darkness, and may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ draw us closer to you and closer to one another until your kingdom comes in all of its fullness. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The elders of Creston Church have given their supervision for the preparation of the Lord's Supper prior to our service, and they are joining with all of us for this gracious meal in their own safe places. Now it's time for all of you to make sure that the bread and drink that you have prepared is nearby for everyone who is participating. Enough pieces on a plate for each person in your location and enough cups with a small amount poured out for each person. And I'll prompt you in just a moment when it's time to eat and drink. For those of you who are choosing not to take the communion elements today, let me offer this special blessing to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. Congregation of Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust in him alone for their salvation. All who are sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him as Lord, are now invited to come with gladness to the table of the Lord to receive these gifts of God for the people of God. You may distribute the bread to each person. Eat this bread, drink this cup, come to Christ and never be hungry. Eat this bread, drink this cup, Trust in Christ and you will not thirst. Take the bread. Eat. Remember and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. You may distribute the cups to each person. Taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, taste and see, taste and see the goodness of the Lord, of the Lord. Take, drink, remember and believe 
that the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of all of our sins. Please join me in celebration of God's grace to us with these words from Psalm 103 by saying each phrase right along with me. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. Let's pray. Loving God, thank you for feeding us in this sacrament, for uniting us with Christ, and for giving us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, we come to the conclusion of our corporate worship time, and we hear the last word from our God. So I invite you to stand in body or in spirit, perhaps sit up a little straighter in your chair, stretch out your hands, all as signs to receive God's parting blessing. May the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in our hearts, transform our lives, and brighten the world, and the blessing of God Almighty. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon you always. Amen. 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 Alex, thanks for playing in.